Reverend Miriam McCarthy over the years. Uh, Miriam actually started in the DHSS in 1989. Many years ago would that be? That's a lot. <laughs> she went to the US for six years in between, and hence her favourite team is the Minnesota Twins, gives us an indication. And then she came back here for a second spell in um, the Health and Social Services. Um, she's now in commissioning, obviously in commissioning and audit. Um, and her one wish for the Health and Social Services is one which I'm sure will be echoed by all of us in Northern Ireland, is that the next generation grow up with a more healthy lifestyle than the ones hitherto. And actually knowing the best way to achieve that wish would seem to be one of the, 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 the key challenge for health and social service. So I, again, it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting <coughs> wish. Once again, on your behalf, I do want to thank Miriam for giving her time coming here. She has to go away uh, after the talk, but is happy to take questions immediately after if, if, if you've got some. So Miriam, thank you very much indeed. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Pleasure to be here and uh, certainly I've enjoyed the morning so far and hopefully what I'm going to say this morning will build on previous presentations and pose a few questions and a few challenges for everybody. What I wanted to focus on this morning is just firstly, uh, I've been asked to speak about commissioning an audit and I suppose the key question in my mind is or should there be stronger linkages between the two? So what I'd like to do this morning is provide a little bit of background on commissioning. So forgive me if this is very familiar to some of you and hopefully some of it will be news to others. A little bit about how commissioning is being developed in Northern Ireland and we really are at a developmental stage. A little bit about how audit may make a bigger contribution to commissioning and then a few thoughts around the future relationship between audit and commissioning. <coughs> commissioning cycle. Uh, firstly, um, this is really a very simplified version of a commissioning cycle. If you go on Google or into lots of websites, you'll see much more detailed ones. But I thought for this morning, this one might be helpful in that it uh, makes very clear some of the key components of commissioning. Firstly, it's a cycle, it's not one single step. Secondly, it involves the planning, the procurement and the performance and it links all of those together in one integral way. And in terms of the planning, it specifically involves assessing the population needs, sort of core fundamental uh, public health issue. It involves planning, prioritisation and identifying resources. <coughs> then in the procurement there is an issue around shaping the marketplace and funding and resourcing providers in, a, in an appropriate manner. And then in the performance step there is what we measure and what we monitor around the services and how we monitor that outcome and how we benchmark that outcome either locally or against national benchmarks. And then that helps to inform the next cycle, or not so much the next cycle, the continuation of the cycle, because this is not a start-stop, it truly is a continuation. And I think in, uh, in doing that planning, procuring and performance, there are several key things that happen. One is about identifying priorities, one is about understanding our planning assumptions, progressing the action, thinking about the political implications of what the cycle and its content looks like, thinking also about the public acceptance of what we're doing, and in fact that public involvement is so important, and thinking, last but not least, about the professional and clinical engagement in the commissioning process. So a little bit about the generalities. We, we know the term world-class commissioning uh, is one uh, that's been uh, embraced in England and 
I know Jim had mentioned the term world class and whether we talk about world class or international. I think it's unfortunate in Northern Ireland that sometimes the only things that we are known worldwide are things where we don't really want to celebrate that degree of notoriety. But there is something about ensuring that our commission is of extremely, <coughs> commissioning is extremely high quality. What does it look like in Northern Ireland? Um, I suppose commissioners have always been there, we've always been commissioning services, but we're in a different environment now, and uh, there are some things that have become much more formalised. The HSE Reform Act 2009 sets out commissioning requirements. It's our role within the department to give commissioning direction to the board and agency. It is the board and agency's role to work collectively to produce a commissioning plan, and that is a statutory requirement. So we set the priorities, the board and agency work together to have a joint commissioning plan that reflects those priorities. And that is new, that sort of statutory basis on which we are doing commissioning now since 2009, and this is really the second year of it uh, coming up in April, is new. And I think some of the things that underpin that is the fact that we absolutely need to understand the current system, the people, the data, where the resources are and where they've been utilised. We need to also think about commissioning prevention. This is not just about services and certainly not just about hospital. We need to, I think as Chris uh, relayed this morning in his presentation, commission on evidence and dare I say it, decommission those things on which there is no evidence or which could potentially cause harm. We need to be thinking about commissioning care for long-term conditions and that's a bit more about commissioning along a pathway and a continuum and we recently I think on the uh, 20th of February or thereabouts just issued guidance uh, policy framework for long-term conditions that we expect will be of benefit to commissioners in that it flags up key priorities and key standards that should apply to everybody with long-term conditions. It doesn't go into the detail on each one, but they are key overarching priorities around information, support of carers, medicines management, uh, and patient engagement and self-management. And we also need to think within the commissioning processes of the financial implications. And I think we're all too aware of that today. And interesting, we mentioned finance, of course, this is budget day, so we'll be celebrating later this evening on that one. Commissioning infrastructure in Northern Ireland has been established. We have our five local commissioning groups that are really agencies of the board and we have 11 board PHA service teams. And I'm not going to read all those, uh, sorry, they're in the next slide. Just the purpose of the commissioning uh, structure is to ensure that commissioning intentions are clear and coherent and underpinned by robust evidence. And also to ensure a coherence between local and regional commissioning agendas. And sometimes that interface in Northern Ireland will be grey. We're a small community, some things we deal with regionally, but that local and regional will always need to be well connected. In all of this, we are still committed uh, to a shift left, doing more closer to people's homes, more in their community, more in primary care. And that requires a shift of resource, not necessarily a shift of financial elements but a shift of resource and it also I think requires a real cultural shift around how we think about what we commission and what we do. It's not just more of the same. <coughs> Effective clinical linkages will be all important to that and we have a number of networks which will help make a contribution in terms of informing and garnering professional groups around particular specialty areas. And we constantly need to be thinking about the patient and client involvement and that aspect. The specific service teams established by the board and agency involve regional, on schedule care, maternity and paediatrics, elective care, cancer care, long term <coughs> conditions, 
community care and the elderly, children and families, mental health, and that should be learning disability, but it includes those with hearing loss also, uh, palliative care and prison services. Now that gives you a flavour of firstly the huge breadth of work that has been undertaken and also obviously indicates the integrated approach, the social care aspects and the more health focused aspects are encompassed in that list. And the, these service teams do not work in silos, clearly there are linkages across and between the service teams. And I think just to, to illustrate some of that spectrum of what the uh, commissioning teams will be doing, some of the areas I've already touched on uh, commissioning for prevention, some of the areas will be around looking at inequalities and what can we do to ensure better health rather than just better health services and what do we do in terms of commissioning to ensure that we reduce the inequalities that are so apparent in Northern Ireland as they are in, in other places. And that is a, a very challenging aspect. I think that at every single encounter within health and social care, there is an opportunity for prevention. Prevention is not only in the health promotion field. I think it's, it's everywhere, at every, every contact. So by contrast, commissioning is around reducing inequalities and looking at the broader population issues. Then there is the very specialist nature at the other end of the spectrum. The highly specialised, high cost, low volume <coughs> services. For example, the neonatal intensive care. But that is one, just one example. And we tend in Northern Ireland to have a number of very specialised services they tend by and large to be based in Belfast and within the Belfast Trust. But we don't provide everything and we'll never be in a position of providing everything. So for some highly specialised services, we refer to other places in the UK or Ireland and that will remain the case and that will remain entirely appropriate. And that's another key commissioning issue about how we sustain what we can and provide as much as possible locally on how we procure from other more specialised areas where our volume is so small that we can't justify.